All right, so Science 30, we're going to continue our video and discuss uh, blood disorders. So we just finished talking about platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells. So quick review, the red blood cells carry oxygen and have iron to help them do so. White blood cells are uh, a general term for all of the body's immune cells. Uh, many of them are going to engulf pathogens and gobble them up to break them down and get rid of them. Others are going to um, play a more direct immune cell response, and we'll get into that immune cell response in the next video. Uh, and then platelets are involved in a uh, blood clotting event, and so when platelets are cruising through the blood, they notice a cut or a rupture in a blood vessel. The platelets uh, stop at that site of damage, they start freaking out, they release thromboplastin, they release, uh, I'll just show you here, they release thromboplastin and uh, calcium ions. The calcium ions and the thromboplastin then uh, uh, allow fibrinogen, which is floating in the blood as well, to turn into an active sticky form called fibrin, and the fibrin wraps in a stretchy net, uh, basically grabs all the red blood cells and keeps them where they are, so it looks like this image here and then that stops your blood from bleeding. So if you ever pop a pimple and it's bleeding and bleeding and you gotta stop it from bleeding, you gotta hold it down, right? And you wait for it to sort of harden. The reason why your blood hardens or after a cut, the reason why your blood hardens and stops bleeding is because the blood platelets have clotted that blood by converting fibrinogen to fibrin and that stops the blood flow. All right, so disorders of the blood then. Uh, one of the most popular ones would be sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is anything that has anemia attached to it is something that has to do with a blood disorder where there's uh, fewer red blood cells or red blood cells that aren't functioning the way they should. And it's called sickle cell anemia because in this case, you've got red blood cells that are irregularly shaped. They're shaped like a sickle, so like a curved sort of uh, weapon. And so the sickle or tool, so the sickle cell, red blood cell is hard it's irregularly shaped, it's not round, nor is it biconcave, and it's not flexible. And so it doesn't squeeze through tight blood vessels very well. And so you can see here these sickle cell shaped ones, these long looking red blood cells get clogged. They get clogged, they get stuck in the red blood cells, they don't flow very well, and they also don't do their job. They don't hold red, uh, these sickle cell red blood cells do not hold oxygen the way they should. So they're useless and they don't transport oxygen. So you get the fatigue and cell death uh, due to not being able to carry that oxygen where it should go because the red blood cells are irregularly shaped. And sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation. It's a genetic mutation. It's a disorder. Anemia in general is uh, a disorder where you have a reduced number of red blood cells or a reduced amount of iron in your diet uh, or an issue where your red blood cells don't bind the iron in your diet very well. Regardless of the cause, general anemia, okay, not sickle cell anemia, but just general anemia, either has less red blood cells or less iron or less attachment of the iron to the red blood cells, and you are going to have the same issues. Uh, weakness, low energy levels, uh, you're going to have trouble breathing, and this is because the red blood cells are functioning to hold oxygen and carry it to different organs and if the red blood cells can't carry oxygen because they don't have the iron to let them do so or you just don't have enough red blood cells then you're not going to have that oxygen delivery to organs and you're going to be tired. So anybody that is anemic uh, typically finds that if they increase their dietary iron so dark leafy greens like spinach right you can increase the amount of iron that gets to your red blood cells and hopefully your anemia symptoms, your lethargy, your tiredness, your weakness can uh, subside because you've now added more iron to your diet. You can also take iron supplement pills which do the same thing as uh, increasing the iron in your diet. Depending on how extreme your anemia symptoms are, you might have to change your diet to include high iron as well as uh, be on some sort of a routine for high blood uh, iron containing uh, vitamins. Okay, so uh, another disorder, we'll call it, for the blood is carbon monoxide poisoning. So carbon monoxide is um, CO. It's a gas. Um, don't confuse this with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. Carbon monoxide is CO, just with one oxygen. And so carbon monoxide affects red blood cells because it stops 
um, the red blood cells from being able to bind oxygen. So what happens is carbon monoxide is released from incomplete combustion. So let's say like car exhaust or your furnace in your house uh, is always is, is burning a natural gas. And if that natural gas doesn't burn properly or it doesn't get exhausted out of the house properly, like through a chimney or a vent, um, and it builds up in the home, uh, it's deadly. And the way carbon monoxide poisoning works is carbon monoxide has a higher affinity to the hemoglobin in your red blood cells than oxygen does to the hemoglobin in your red blood cells. So you have red blood cells, which have this protein called hemoglobin in it, and that hemoglobin allows the red blood cell to bind oxygen and carry it throughout the body. Carbon monoxide is much more attracted to the hemoglobin than oxygen is. So as soon as there's carbon monoxide present and you breathe it in, it goes into your blood and automatically attaches to the hemoglobin on the red blood cells. It takes up the binding site, therefore, for oxygen to bind. And so oxygen never gets to bind to the red blood cells. And since oxygen doesn't get to bind, oxygen, oxygen doesn't go to your brain, oxygen doesn't go to your cells, oxygen doesn't get exchanged in the body, and you die. And so it's called carbon monoxide poisoning is called the the uh, silent killer because you don't feel it, you don't smell it, you basically just get sleepy and tired and pass out, and very quickly you'll you'll die. And so carbon monoxide is a very dangerous gas to have in your home, and this is why carbon monoxide alarms are should be installed in every house, uh, even if you have an older house like I do. Um, you can get a plug-in carbon monoxide alarm, which sticks right into an outlet, uh, and it'll detect carbon monoxide gases. And if there are any present, it'll start beeping uh, to notify you to get out of the house and have that checked out immediately because it's very dangerous. So initially, you might find shortness of breath, dizziness, uh, tiredness, you might get nausea, and then very quickly, especially if while you're sleeping this happens, you won't be able to necessarily notice these symptoms and then it can uh, very quickly kill you in your sleep. So carbon monoxide poisoning is dangerous and the reason why it works so excessively is because carbon monoxide, the molecule, is more attracted to the hemoglobin in your red blood cells than the oxygen is. And so even though red blood cells are supposed to bind oxygen, when carbon monoxide is present, they bind that instead. And oxygen, carbon monoxide is not oxygen and so it's not helpful. In fact, it starves your brain and it starves your organs, and, and yes, you will eventually die. Okay, uh, leukemia uh, is unfortunately a type of uh, cancer of red blood cells, and what, sorry, of white blood cells, where the leukocytes, the white blood cells, uh, are uncontrollably dividing. And so you have a large abnormal amount of white blood cells in the body, and so this is a type of blood cancer where you have an uncontrollable growth or cell division of white blood cells. And so leukemia is treated with uh, much the same methods as any cancer would be treated. Um, and the goal in treating leukemia is to destroy the abnormal cells and then have a bone marrow transplant, which is what I showed you in the last video, um, in an attempt to swap out the bone marrow that is clearly faulty in your body with bone marrow that is not faulty and can properly make white blood cells in the right amount. Uh, thrombocytopenia uh, is similar to hemophilia and this disorder is where uh, platelets are affected and in this case you have a very low number of platelets and individuals with uh, thrombocytopenia uh, do not clot their blood so they bruise very easily they bleed very aggressively. Uh, a simple cut could bleed for um, uh, an excessive amount of time. It will never clot up. Uh, nosebleeds are very common in these people because uh, your blood is not thick. It doesn't thicken, it doesn't clot, and so you constantly bleed out uh, uh, very frequently. It can be very dangerous, uh, and there are uh, medicated and uh, nutrient-based um, treatments for this, but it is a very, difficult disorder to deal with in life. Okay, um, just a quick example here to make sure that we're all okay with what these three major types of blood components do in the body. So a normal individual has around seven to 800 red blood cells. Uh, 
in any regular sample of blood, let's say there's one to three white blood cells, and then five to ten platelets in any given sample of blood. Uh, so on a diploma, an Alberta diploma, we might have a question that looks like this. Um, that's the normal person, patient A and patient B, and it gives us their data. So patient A has about 1,100 red blood cells, two white blood cells, and five platelets. Um, so we want to look at their diagnosis. Well, comparing them to the normal individual, uh, we have uh, well within the average of platelets, well within the average for white blood cells, but we have slightly above average red blood cells. So I gotta ask myself, what could I say this individual with lots of white blood or lots of red blood cells, pardon me, um, is experiencing? Well, if you have lots of red blood cells, red blood cells are functioning to carry oxygen. So you may have um, an issue where you aren't getting enough oxygen to your organs and so your body is producing a higher than normal amount of red blood cells in an attempt to uh, cope with the lack of oxygen getting to your to your organs and your cells. Maybe you're in a, in a region where there isn't as much oxygen available. Uh, and so like for example, closed spaces, oxygen amounts are depleting. So if there's less oxygen to breathe, your body might be coping by increasing the red blood cell count and therefore hoping that it makes oxygen transfer more efficient because there's less, less oxygen in your environment to breathe. So it's trying to make more red blood cells in your body so that what little oxygen there is to breathe, you are um, uh, you are able to utilize. So the diagnosis here, we could say, because there's an abnormally high red blood cell count, this might indicate that the person is in a low oxygen environment and they're trying to compensate uh, physiologically. So maybe this person's in a high altitude environment and they're just trying to adjust, right? Maybe this person's higher up than they used to be and so their blood count is gonna have to be a little higher than usual because there's less oxygen available in higher altitudes. Okay, uh, the patient B has 780 red blood cells, well within average, 34 white blood cells, and 70 platelets. Patient B has excessive white blood cell counts and excessive platelet counts. And so uh, this person has a high white blood cell and platelet count. Uh, they're likely trying to not only fight an infection with the white blood cells, but the function of platelets is to clot blood. So this individual likely currently has a open wound and the wound is infected, but the wound is also not closed yet. And so the platelets are trying to increase in numbers so they can clot up and plate that blood. Okay, guys, so I'll end this video here. The next video is going to be about the immune response and what those white blood cells do and how we can fight infections. Uh, thanks very much.